Hey, hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I'm great, sitting out here, enjoying the plants. Got a new orchid opened up here, a vanda. It's kind of hard to see, it's pretty. It's white with little purple spots on it. You just have to take my word for it. The camera won't get any closer than that. I have a box of plants here that I'm about to open up from Hertz. I'm gonna speed through it here real quick. Here's what everything looks like. Everything's bubble wrapped. Nothing from what I can tell looks damaged. I'll have to get the wrappers off before I can tell for sure. And then it looks like the soil's been uh, kept in place with the standard like masking tape. Pretty typical stuff there. Yeah, it was in a box with a heat pack. There's the unboxing part. I placed this order because Hertz usually has a pretty decent selection of just little plants. Apparently a selection of everything. They had a ton of plants on their website. It's been a long time since I had looked at their stuff to do an order, but there is plenty to choose from. Like I said, I was mostly trying to find little things for potential terrariums, some fairy garden things I might be working on. And uh, I ordered a couple plants for other people that I'll show here in the video as well. Now go ahead and start with one of those plants that is being given away. This is kind of thirsty. It could use a big drink, but that's not unusual for things that have just been shipped. This is a pink lemonade lemon tree. Variegated lemon, they call them the pink lemonade variegated lemons has really pretty variegated foliage on it. Not a lot else to say on this one other than, well, I need to give it a big drink. But it looks really thirsty. The variegation on there is really nice though. It's that soft and subtle kind of variegation. That's what I usually prefer on things. Now, was that even in focus? I hope so. Okay, next up, a croton, which is still not really in frame. Need to back things up a little bit, don't I? This croton is called Picasso's Paintbrush. It's one that I've grown before, or several years ago, and I really, really liked it. Excellent croton to have around for texture, which I'm sure you can see why. The growth on it, the leaves are very fine and long. This is a nice one to have around for doing like houseplant arrangements. Adds something that's nice and airy and upright and can have other bold green things around it. Helps break things up and adds a lot of interest, but these are great on their own too. The Picasso's paintbrush, from what I remember when I grew up before, it didn't like quite as much sun as just your regular croton, the Petra croton, but still could take a decent amount. If I'm remembering correctly, a little bit more finicky when it came to watering. I do recall at least the one I had, and that could have been for other reasons. I remember the one I had being one that would just kind of drop leaves very quickly. If it would get a little bit too dry, it didn't give much notice as far as the wilt was concerned. There's a regular croton, if they start to move too far onto the dry side, you can kind of tell from the foliage and uh, you give it a drink and they should pop right back as long as you catch it really fast. And ideally we catch it before they even get there, right? But you know, sometimes things happen. But I do remember that the Picasso's paintbrush that I had years ago, uh, not giving as much warning. So I will be sure to pot this up into a mixture that's not going to dry as quickly as what I used before, so that that can all just be avoided altogether. It stay wet for too long either, because it's a croton and that would kill it. Isn't that a neat croton though? Yeah, I go in a total different directions with crotons. I like the ones that have great big, huge, gigantic, bold foliage. Then I'm equally as drawn to ones that have that really nice fine texture, because there's just so much color in there. When this is more full, it'll be more noticeable. And as it gets more light, it'll be more noticeable. So I'm holding the leaves together here so you can kind of see what it looks like when that's all together. Lots of orange, red, greens, yellows. It has that fun, airy, tropical nature. Here's a fern, kind of a sad looking fern too. It does have some fresh fiddleheads coming up, so that's a good sign. Looks like there's some dry stuff I'll need to come out here and prune out. There are a few plants here that I noticed when I took the bubble wrap off of them that they could use a cleanup. That's okay. And this is a Brazilian tree fern. As these mature, the newer leaves that come out should come out with more of a bronzy, coppery tone to them. And over time, like a long, long, long time, these will grow a trunk, just, I mean, like a tree fern, but a smaller tree fern, one that doesn't take up anywhere near as much space as like the Australian tree ferns do, or the Tasmanian tree ferns, much, much more compact size to it. But any trunk that would come out of this, that's gonna be way, way, way down the road. Not anytime soon. Okay, who's ready for something tiny and adorable? Look at them. Well, they're not in focus and the tags are in the way. Come on now. Look at them. Look at those tiny little leaves. Aren't they just precious? These are Peter Pan Ivies. T 
teeny tiny little bitty ivies. They have small leaves. This is one though that does need a chill, which I didn't realize. They need to go below 40 for winter time. So kind of already failing there. That's okay. I can stick them outside and let them get that cool that they need. So these need that chill does mean there are hardier varieties. Zones 5B through 11 says they can go down to minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 23 degrees Celsius. He, they really don't want to focus. Apparently they're camera shy plants. So that's all fine and good. So this would be a good candidate for if I were doing something potted outdoors that I want to remain nice and formal. This ivy stays much smaller. I, I would imagine that it'll keep growing out like any other ivy would. You can see the leaves on these are much finer, more dainty. They have more of a delicate appearance to them than a regular ivy. Very small, very cute. I got one of these to put onto a very small little obelisk that I have, and then the, well, the other I just got for good measure because it was cute and I wanted two of them. Let's see, what do I have? Okay, next up, here's one that I'm bound to kill. It's a heart fern. Isn't it cute? Yes, now that it's in focus, you can kind of see that a little bit better. Heart ferns are an interesting plant to me because I have had people over the years talk about how tough and hardy they are for them. I have killed so many of these ferns, but the thing is, I, I know what the problem is. They dry out too quickly. When I have these under glass in a terrarium, I do not have that problem. So I need to make sure, I mean, look at, you can already see it's got some death and desiccation there just from shipping. So it's not a great sign, but also something I was expecting to see because they don't have much forgiveness when it comes to drying out. So I'm not shocked by that at all. I did go ahead and give everything a water after I noticed how dry that lemon was. So the soil is damp on here. So that's good. So hopefully that'll stop that process of any more leaves starting to burn out on it. And I am, I'm going to go ahead and put this under a glass bell just to help hold the humidity in so that it doesn't just shrivel up and die on me as soon as it dries out. So despite them being finicky and uh, kind of diva ferns in my opinion, I still really like them because they have such fun unique leaves. They're fun, thick, leathery, and I mean, they look like hearts which is really cute too. Yeah, that's cute. I do, I love a heart's fern. There's something just special about them, especially when they don't have dead stuff down in the pot. They're actually really, really pretty fun house plants. I look forward to seeing what that's going to look like in the future when I have that under a bell. Likewise with this next plant. Oh, <laughs> it's going for a smooth transition almost just knocked over the one that's already falling apart. Another fern that I think might be a bit of a diva. This one I've never grown before. It says the world's smallest Boston fern on there. It's just a Nephrolepes. Varieties mini Russells. It's a 9 to 11, down to 20 degrees. And it says that it only gets two inches tall by three inches wide. I don't know if that's true, but what I can say is it doesn't look that great, right? I mean, look at all those crunchies. Those are a lot of crunchies. So this one's also going to go under a bell, I suppose, to get some hydration. You know, the ferns can be more tricky inside of those glass enclosures because even though they like that humidity sometimes you don't have the airflow for them i just got this one because i was curious about it now that i have it i'm kind of like eh, not really into it but that's probably also because it, it doesn't look very good it really doesn't and there's just something about it where i can tell it might be kind of a pain it might be one of those plants that just dries out and falls all over the place and makes a huge mess. I don't know. Time will tell. It's cute. So it has that going for it. It'd be cuter once I get all this nastiness out of there, then that will look a lot better. I didn't want to clean them up too much before putting them on camera because I wanted to be able to see like what they look like. And this is how it showed up looking like this. It, it, this one wasn't bone dry like the other ones were. I did still give it a drink, so hopefully it will bounce back. You know, sometimes this is just sort of the nature of getting plants in winter time. Oh, may as well go through and show all the ones that aren't looking very good up right now, right? So here's another one. This is a Syngonium, a really freaking adorable Syngonium. This one, the variety is right here. It says Pink Fairy on it. This one only gets, I think, five inches tall. It's not unusual from my experience for Syngoniums to show up in the mail looking a little bit rough sometimes. And you gotta remember, it's winter. It hasn't been that cold of a winter, so I wasn't too concerned about ordering plants. I don't think that these even really had to do, deal with too much colds, 
but there's a little bit of cleanup I have to do in here and that's okay. I've had syngoniums come in that looked way worse than this before. In my prior video, but what was supposed to be last weekend's vlog, I showed my terrariums and uh, these, I believe they're called the Super Dwarf Pixies or Super Pixie Syngonium Podophyllums. One of my favorites because they stay really small and they get really full and they're just really adorable. So this is going to be bigger than those. It already is bigger than those. But if it really only gets five inches tall, then that's not going to be much bigger than this is already. As this stands, this is probably, I don't know, three inches. So you throw a couple more inches on top of that. That's a nice size plant for a terrarium. And the foliage, the leaves, have a lot of fun variegation on them. It's, I mean, just red and green variegation. But the... Uh, jump from leaf to leaf and the change you see in the variegation where it see all this one's like more green with just a little red vein this one right here it's more of a mottled kind of variegation that runs all the way through i can see a leaf in here that almost looks like a caladium up top there's somewhere the leaves don't have much red in them it's just fun i like plants where you never know what you're going to get from leaf to leaf as long as it's not you know a plant that's just reverting its variegation that's not fun look at that leaf isn't that adorable just bring that a little bit closer and get a better shot at the leaves that are tucked inside on that note i have been getting asked by people whether syngoniums aren't opening like they'll hold their leaves down low inside the plants they're not pushing them open usually that means that they would like some more water or it can mean that they're not getting quite enough light or any combination of both of those but generally it just means they would like some more water which is why this one probably has a lot of stuff that's held down in there because it was in a box for you know several days needs a drink needs some light and some air movement and i'm sure that as this flushes out that's going to look really really pretty yeah, I look forward to seeing how this one grows. It's some nice, fun leaves. Bigger than the Pixie, which, you know, I just love. It's one of my favorites, but it has so much fun color in it. Pixie's just green and white, which is beautiful, but it's not the same. It looks like there's only a couple left, and it's more tiny plants. Look at this. Isn't that adorable? This is a begonia. Another compact variety. This one's called Tiny Gem. The Tiny Gem will grow up and out. So not quite a trailing habit, but it's going to come up and go over. So it's more of a wide growth to it. And they get really cute little tiny white flowers that go up and down the stems, mostly on the ends. If you've ever seen these in flower before, then you probably know why I like this so much. They're just adorable when they have their flowers on them this is it's looking a little bit sad i looks like shipping may have been kind of hard on this one it's pretty limp i actually should probably stop touching it it's going to need some time to rehydrate i'm going to stick that someplace that's warmer that way it can hopefully rehydrate more quickly and uh, i'm going to avoid touching it and fussing with it too much because some of the stems on here you can see they're pretty limp i would like for them to be more upright and stiff like this right here. So we're going to be very careful with that one. Set that back there. I don't knock it over and break it. Okay, last up. Well, there is one other thing, but this is the last plant. Look at how cute. Look at, you see that? Like you can see it in the picture. There's a picture on the other one. This is the tiny pink begonia. Looks like a little tree, but it's not. It's a begonia, so it's going to have these lightish pink flowers on them like you saw in the picture there. It only gets six inches tall by six inches wide. Great for a fairy garden or just any sort of miniature garden. Potentially, maybe a terrarium. You guys let me know down in the comments. What have been your experiences with begonias and terrariums? I have had great luck with starting begonias in terrariums, like if I'm just trying to get something rooted, sticking cuttings in the terrarium, and then pulling those out. But long term, I haven't done a ton of experiments with begonias inside of glass, in areas where they don't have much air movement. I would think in a terrarium these would have to be used very wisely, right? We'd have to really think out how it's being used and where it's being placed because I just feel like there's just something about them. I feel like they would rot very easily. At least these two varieties back here, particularly that one. It's shinier, which usually in my head always means that they can take more humidity, but that's not always true. Oftentimes that's not true because there's still begonias. Begonias indoors as a house plant in a pot in a terrarium or in whatever setting is so different from growing them outdoors. Typically I always err on the side of keeping them more dry. So putting them in a terrarium, I'm like, eh. I don't know, we'll see about that. I didn't really get these for terrarium. They're going in a like miniature 
garden type planter sort of deal. I was just curious what some of your experiences have been or if you could suggest some varieties to try out. I'd appreciate it. Last up, just a few caladium roots. These are the spring fling. Fun, really pretty reddish pink leaves with dark veins. I will say the picture is a bit dramatic. This isn't <laughs> quite what they look like when I've grown them. Not normally this vibrant, but uh, maybe, we'll see. Maybe theirs are more vibrant than the ones I've seen before. I don't know. All right, that's gonna do it. Just a few plants. Got in the mail here from Hertz. Hertz has been around for a long time. They have a really great selection. Overall, pretty happy with everything I got. If I had to pick a favorite, it would probably be the uh, Syngonium or one of the little ivies or uh, begonias. Just fun, cute little plants. I'm glad to have them. And that heart fern, even though, you know, I talked about it and how much of a pain they are, I actually have a lot of trouble finding those. I'm, I'm not going anywhere right now anyways, because, you know, pandemic. I was going out, I had a pretty hard time finding those heart ferns, so I'm glad to have one of those. I'm gonna take that inside right now when I'm done filming this and put that under a belt. That way it can't just drop dead on me should it dry out for like 30 seconds. Fun new plants, some of them need a little bit of rehabilitation. It's a tricky time of year for ordering, and I don't know when I'm going to release this video. Right now it's like mid-January-ish and temperatures have been fairly stable, unusually warm on top of that, which is fantastic. If it were consistently below 40 or below freezing, I wouldn't be ordering any plants. Just throwing that out there. I don't want to mislead anybody because I don't know when this video is coming out, uh, but it's probably coming out in February. If it comes out in February, it's probably much colder and I wouldn't be ordering plants. So anyways, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. Oh, it's so cute. It looks sickly, but I still like it. I think it's supposed to look kind of sickly because it hasn't opened up all the way. And that's just kind of the nature of that variegation type that it has. It's so cute. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. I'm talking fast now because my battery's running out. Do you have any favorite places that you like to order your plants from? Let me know. That'd be helpful to other people down there in the comments too, who are maybe looking for some new places to pick some things up while people are trying to stay home and stay safe. And I'll keep everybody updated on what goes on with these various plants throughout the vlogs and as I do some different things. For the most part, all of them need to be potted up and need to do something different with them. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye. Bye-bye.